So what we will hear from his lotus mouth will be a uh, repetition. Of what he has heard for many, many years directly from Shiravi. This is like an extension of the Upanishad. The word Upanishad comes from Upa. Nia, me sitting below, underneath, Shan, divine personality, saintly person. Means, Upanishad means that what one has heard directly from great sages and souls. Their Bani, their words are Upanishad. We know of uh, 108 Upanishad, some say there are 11 main Upanishad, but the Vedas, <coughs> like everything else in the Vedic uh, culture, are personifications. Persons. So it is not that the Upanishads, the, the, the Vedas have been uh, nailed in the coffin of pages of the books. Yeah. When a person dies, then his, uh, his body is put into a coffin and nailed and then put into mm-hmm. under six pages under this. Finish. That is not like that. Therefore, the Vedas continue. Uh, a lot of the original Shrutikana, the personifications of the Vedas, they were by the grace of Krishna and Lord Rama, Krishna, given a gopi form to take part, participate in the Rasadams. The Rasadams is also continued. So the Shruti is also continued. Therefore, the Upanishad has not been finished. Just like Krishna's pastimes are being continually vibrated by Lord Balaram's immediate expansion, the thousand billion Anantashesh. It's a competition, divine competition between uh, Krishna's pastimes and Ananda Shri's description of these pastimes, divine competition. And before Balaram in his form as Ananda Shri can finish one pastime Thousand other pastimes springs up. And so with his thousand books, he's continuing. A very short <coughs> uh, introduction to the Lord Balaram because today it should be reserved exclusively 
सो दे ग्लोरिफिकेशन नॉट बलदेव दाऊजी बलना एल द ब्रदर ऑफ कृष्णा शंकर शन हु वाज रिमूव्ड बाय योगमाया फ्रॉम द वूम ऑफ देवकी इन मथुरा प्रिजन ऑफ डंजन कंसा so there was a very mystical thing mysterious everybody was waiting for the eighth he would have been the eighth but suddenly devaki she was pregnant that was very much noticeable and it was reported to kansa so he was waiting for Baladev's uh, appearance, but Sandeep, Baladev didn't come. Never he was no more pregnant. So everybody was thinking that that rascal Kansa must have gone to some tantric. and finish the fetus in the room actually vishnu chakravarti thar who makes this point that to avoid a bad reputation because kansa had been killing all the infants they were his infants as soon as they were born so people were thinking in a void to avoid further infamy infamy bad reputation he must have done this but shankar shan is not the name is shankar shan This means he was attracted by the womb of Mother Rohini, and being the first expansion of Krishna, he was the most attractive personality. Also, there's actually no difference between Krishna and Balram. None, <coughs> even to the extent that Krishna possesses four extra qualities. Other than all the Narayan expansions and Baladev, let's do this. That's all. He also has extraordinary qualities. Now, what is something very in, in unique about Lord Balram is that he is the uh, <coughs> controller, Ishwar of Sandini Shakti. Krishna has three internal forces: Sandini, Sambhir, and Radha. Sandini Shakti is the basis. Chit, uh, uh, I mean, sat basis. It is the very basis of existence. The basis of the entire spiritual world. Of everything is the basic. On him rests everything. He expands himself into all the beautiful, extraordinary, transcendental forms in Vrindavan, as Shankar Shan. Vaikuntha Paravyam Pants. Now <clears throat> uh, we are more eager to hear from our guest speaker today, uh, so we shall try to make it short. I want to make just a few points, which I think are very important, especially for me. 
which I would like to share with everyone. And that is Guru Tattva. Balaram is Guru Tattva, Sandini All the wayward souls are being brought under the uh, sway, the attractive influence of Krishna. He himself is the most attractive personality. So, the spiritual master, Guru, Saksha Dhari, Guru Saksha Dhari, is actually the expansion of Nandaram. Nandaram is also the Paramatma. And the external Manifestation of Paramatma is our Divine Grace Guru. And <clears throat> since He is non-different from the Supreme Lord in every aspect, that means Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Rasaraj. <clears throat> Akhila Rasam Murti, the personification, embodiment of all the Rasams. So is our Divine Master, Sri Dhamudhi. He represents all the Rasas. However, uh, Shanta Dasya. Sakya Vatsalya. These are direct manifestations of Lord Bhagavan. In his manifestation, Madhuji Rasa is the younger sister of Krishna, uh, Radharani, in the Manjari mood. This was particularly highlighted by Srila Parman Sachuravani, Sukhadev Goswami, where after describing Krishna's last nila, he describes Baladev Rasa, Lord Balaram also performed Rasa, which actually was to remove all doubts in the mind of everyone that Lord Balaram uh, is also Rasa Raj. <coughs> and therefore his expansion as Srila Gurudev he represents all the different rasas. Uh, <coughs> while comparing the two ras nilas of Krishna and Balaram, Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur, as well as other commentators, Jiva Goswami and Srila Srila Swami, uh, makes the point that certain aspects of this particular pastime Nila, Ras Nila, are not present in Lord Balaram's Ras Nila. Krishna expanded himself millions and millions of gopis where every single gopi uh, was fully absorbed in dancing with Krishna, thinking that she is the only one Krishna is dancing with. In Lord Balaram, this was not the case. He was in the middle and thousands of his own gopis were dancing with. And there are some other aspects uh, which is uh, discussed by Shri Shkuti Goswami. 
the point I try to raise here is that the spiritual master is fully competent to guide any of his students uh, into the uh, Manjuri Bhav, the Madhuja Lila, I mean Madhuja Rasa. So Lord Balaram gives us strength, spiritual strength to fight Maya. Therefore, he is known as Bala. Ramanti Jogi Nam Nante Satyananda Chitatmani Iti Ramapadena Show Iti Ramapadena He is known as Ram because he gives the greatest pleasure. Ramante. Yogi Nam Over Ram comes from Ramante. Iti Ram Padena Ashu. That is why he is known as Padi. Pad means nomenclature. So we pray at the lotus feet of Lord Ram to give us strength to reject the attractions of this material world and fill our heart with a single drop of that blissful ocean of ecstatic love for Krishna. Ram. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Offer my loving regards to all of you, the assembled devotees here. Mm. So long you have heard about beautiful ways, beautiful ways of descriptions about the glories of Lord Balaram of Srimad Sarvabhava Mahaprabhuji. Again, the way he narrated, explained certain aspects of the glories, special aspects of the glories of Balaram is beautiful. Hmm. So again, <clears throat> following the flow of what he was explaining, <laughs> Balorama. So today is the most auspicious appearance of Lord Balorama, who is none other than the second body, or second form, second self of Supreme Lord Krishna. We all know that. <clears throat> we need to understand in the first place the Baladeva, the function, the most vital and essential functions of the Baladeva or Balorama is actually from the very beginning and at the end, up to the end of unending end of the Krishna Lila. I repeat. So his, all his infinite functionings, unlimited functionings of devotional service, the divine couple, Supreme Lord. So it, it begins from the very fundamental level. From the very beginning and also it flows limitlessly to the last limit of limitlessness, last limit of the unlimited leaders of the divine couple. 
So therefore, the divine function, the transcendental functioning, <coughs> the essential functioning of Lord Balarama, the all different forms to help promote Lassam, Radha Krishna Lila is everywhere. <coughs> from the beginning to the end. <coughs> I should rather say from the beginning, beginning less beginning. Achinta, from the beginning less beginning to the end less end. <coughs> Has to be said like that. So everything, all business is of infinite character. Here, yeah, all divine business in the world of Krishna Leela, Radha Krishna Leela, Parvarama Leela, <coughs> is that of infinite nature. Although it is beginning, but it is without a beginning. Although it is ending, relatively ending, but it is actually unending. That we call it the last limit of unlimited. Mm. So, the functioning and the all activities of Sri Balarama or Baladeva is all around from the beginning to end of the Leela of Divine Couple. It is all encompassing. There is no part, there cannot be any part of the Radha Krishna Leela without the direct contribution of Baladeva Tattva. It's all encompassing, mm. all covering, all pervading. That's what is Baladeva. One, one main aspect. No Radha Krishna Lila is possible without his contribution, without his functioning. So, and we see, see, Baladeva appeared before Krishna, very significant. By Tattva, by the nature of Tattva is also very significant. He, he was meant to appear by the sweet will, inspired and arranged by the sweet will of Lord Krishna. So he was meant to appear before him. His elder brother. There was very, there was very good reason, great reason for Lord Balarama to appear before Krishna again, to make the groundwork, to make the groundwork, transcendental groundwork before the appearance of Krishna, because. Before Lord Krishna appears, he starts doing any Leela. All the groundwork, fundamental work are done by Balaram. All the surroundings, everything arranged by Balaram. In such direct expansion of Lord Krishna. Okay. Similar way, he also appeared before Lord Krishna. Again, to do the necessary groundwork mm -hmm. in Gokula Praja. <clears throat> and he was, his nature of appearance also very mystical, as he described. The very nature, character of his divine appearance is of mystical nature, wonderfully mystical. By that example we can understand, can never be like simple human birth, never like human birth, all to be realized in transcendence, must be realized in transcendence. So how mystical, wonderful, mystical, this way of birth, way of appearance, he was firm. He first made appearance in the womb, divine womb of Mother Devotee. 
Then he was mystically cold, wonderful. Cold in the Omba, Rohim, Father. But the way he made appearance, the womb of Mother Devok is so mystical, <coughs> so fine way, fine time, subtle kind. Nobody realized when it happened, how it happened, when it happened. <coughs> Everything. So, when it happened and how it happened. So it was literally, in a literally of transcendental character of his appearance, first appearance in the mother, the womb of mother devotee. And then thereafter, being arranged by Yogamaya Devi, by special sweet will, by the special sweet will, driven by the special sweet of sweet will of Krishna, Yoga Devi arranged <coughs> Krishna. <coughs> Krishna here. Jai Baladeva. <laughs> Why should I always chant the name of Krishna? I can chant the name of Balaram. Other form of Krishna. <laughs> mm. So, <clears throat> the way he was removed, he was transferred from the womb of Mother Devaki into the womb of uh, Rohini Devi. Very mystically wonderful, transcendentally wonderful. Mm. So, it was all driven by, according driven by the sweet will of Krishna, inspired by the sweet will of the Supreme Lord Krishna, Yoga Maya Devi arranged everything that way. So, some point, the entity of Balarama has mystically, mysteriously, miraculously manifested in the womb of Mother Devi, uh, got attracted, directly attracted, Transfer into the womb of Rahini Mata. And thereafter, he directly manifested from, from the womb of Devi Rahini, Mother Rahini, as the elder brother of Krishna. See? And it was a part of Leela. <clears throat> so that Kamsa could not get any hold. Never get any hold of Balaram. Okay, so arranged. I mean, these are all <coughs> Leela. Great Leela, dramatic Leela also involved. See, very nature, one of the <coughs> variegated natures, fundamental natures of Lord Krishna or Lord Balaram is that they are so playful. So every part of their Leela is also as, as it is powerful, seriously, realistically powerful also playful. So here also we find see, Kamsa actually Kamsa is nothing simply nothing without the strength divine power of Balarama. Okay. So if Balarama or Krishna just wills, just even momentarily wishes to destroy Kamsa, just in their mind, they don't need to fight or create some ground and atmosphere to kill Kamsa, to kill that evil. Kamsa is not none other than none other than a sample. Okay, representation of evil force, evil power. So, Kamsa is simply nothing before the power, infinite power of Krishna and Balaram. So, they do, they do not really need to plan out so much to go away from Kamsa, to remain protected from Kamsa, this and that. Rather, 
Le dijeron una cosa que como leer simple y nothing. Ok. No tiene una infinitesimal dot. Ok. Compared to the extent, infinite, unlimited extent. Ok. And the weight, unlimited volume of the power of Balorama Krishna. But then there will be no lila. Some or other, they have to compose, they have to be designing their dramatic lila <clears throat> to be enjoying their vira rasa. Vira rasa is one of the twelve rasas. It's also included within five main rasas. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> vira, they cannot enjoy their vira rasa. And they cannot also distribute, extend the same taste among their associates. Therefore, they have to be designing, planning out, and nicely designing some sort of dramatic exposition, display of their leela. Therefore, all these things. And the way is constant. So, anyway, <coughs> so. <coughs> Thus Balarama appeared in the Gokula Praja before Krishna as his divine elder brother to take care of everything like before before the supreme boss for the Guru Guru Radha Govinda <coughs> so before the supreme boss, supreme authority appears in, comes into the field, you know, he or her CEO comes first. CEO. CEO comes to make all the management. Okay, all the arrangement, proper arrangement. Here, Balaram is more than CEO. She or Krishna, both that, <laughs> but at least is CEO <clears throat> many ways. So he appeared. He made his appearance <clears throat> before him in order to take care of everything very nice, <clears throat> perfectly. Or making all the groundwork, making all the necessary arrangement or the transcendental Krishna Leela to happen. Yes. That's how it, that's how it happened. Hmm. By nature, Balarama is called as Ananta Deva in other words. Has got many names. Balaram, Aladeva, Ananta Deva, Shesha. <coughs> this way, <coughs> Balai, one of the adorable names given by Mahajasuda, Balai, Kamai, Balai, Balabhadra, Shankarshana. This way. So, the very derivative meaning of Balorama, <coughs> as already beautifully explained by Sarvavana Prabhu, mm, that can be complementing a little bit to his beautiful explanation, or supplementing or complementing, adding or decorating the, main, the essence of the beauty of his explanation. <coughs> You know, our learned devotees, you know, Balam means strength, <coughs> power, <coughs> Rama means Ramana, Rama means pleasure giving, give her a great pleasure. <coughs> pleasure giving, greatly pleasure giving personality. Rama. So, Balarama is the combination of both. Bala, character of Bala and the character of Rama. 
pleasing, pleasure with character. Mm. Now, what kind of strength? He is the master, he is the lord of unlimited strength and unlimited pleasure. Ecstasy potency, pleasure potency. Pleasure potency of Krishna also, Srimati Radharani. They are all interconnected. Satchit Ananda, Anandam Se Ladin, Sadam Se Sambhi, Chidam Se Sambhi, Chare Gair Kodi Man. So, Satchit Ananda, and Satchit Ananda is interrelated. Being one of the definitions, one of the perfect definitions of Lord Krishna, Satchit Ananda. They are very much interrelated, inseparably interrelated. Similarly, <coughs> see, Sandhani Sambit, Lajini, they are also inseparably interrelated. One complements the other, no doubt about it. So, Baladeva Prabhu represents Sandhini. Sandhini means something which makes Sandhi, makes the connection. Sandhini means making the connections, the unifying principle, the great principle unifying between you know, Chidamsa, Sambit and Ladin. Also, not just unifying both, it is actually flowing through, unifyingly flowing through everything. Sandhini flowing through Sambhi and Ladini Sarta of Krishna. That of Sambhita character and Ladini character. All three aspects are basically the extension of Krishna, Krishna's potential, whether Satchit Anandam, Sadamsa, Chidamsa. Anandamsa, all directly or directly being extended, directly manifesting, expanded from Krishna. Although in particular Sandhini, the function of Sandhini is represented, taken care of Baladeva, but in the wider sense of meanings, Baladeva is also there, the function of Baladeva is also there in Chidamsa, Shambhi and <coughs> Anandamsa in a very fine way, wonderful fine way. So, but in particular he represents Sandhini, the role of Sandhini. Again, Sandhini means one who makes, who makes divine connection one who unifies, one supremely unifying and harmonizing principle in all aspects of Radha Krishna Leela, Shandhini. Mm -hmm. Wider sense of things, supreme harmonizing principle. Mm -hmm. Unifying means harmonizing. Mm -hmm. So, back to the point. <coughs> The Supreme Lord, direct self, direct self of Krishna, the second self of Krishna, second in command, beside Krishna, Baladeva is the combination of, is the unification, personification of Balam and Ramana, both characters. Again, Balam means the highest strength. I'm missing your presence, what to do? I will be missing your sweet pleasure more you. Yes. <laughs> the highest Balam means highest strength. Ramana means highest pleasure giving Lord. Now, Strength is not of 
mundane character. What kind of saint has a divine character? Lord of all, limitless transcendental strength. The transcendental Lord of all, transcendental strength and the transcendental <coughs> pleasure potency. Ramanam. So now, in other words, can be described as the Lord who is beautifully powerful and on the other hand powerfully beautiful. I repeat, beautifully powerful as well as powerfully beautiful. That is Balarama. Being the direct extension and expansion of Lord Krishna, another form of Krishna. So, whatever qualifications we find in Krishna also can also be found in Lord Balarama. Okay, in different, in different dimensions, different ways. Okay, in non-difference. While we see Balarama Tattva, not differently from Krishna, but in non-difference, simultaneous non-difference, non-distinction, then we find whatever way Lord Krishna is qualified, whatever we find the great wonderful qualifications, qualities in Krishna, same can be found in Balarama. So, another way, Balarama is known as Shankarshana, you all know. I am not going into the repeated explanations of all that, but is already known by the devotees. The, the, one of the causes why he was called as Shankarshana is that because he was Sammaka Rupena Akrishtam from the Umba Mother Devotee and placed into the Umba Mother Rahini. So Sammaka Rupena Karshitam the Sankarshanam. Sammaka Rupena Akrishtam or Sammaka Rupena Karshitam. Shambhak means very appropriately, very properly appropriate, very prominent. So, one who was very appropriately, appropriately attracted in order to fulfill the desire of Lord Krishna, so, so appropriately attracted from the womb of Mother Devaki and got placed in, placed in the womb of Mother Rahim in Braja. So, okay. Therefore, he is called as Shankarshanam. <coughs> Shankarshanam. Other meaning, just as the name, very name, Krishna has got the wings, characterized by his all attractiveness. Lord Krishna is all attractive. The very meanings, the very meaning of the term Shankarshan, word Shankarshan also, indicating that the wider, the widely general sense of the meaning, Lord Balarama has all, has also got the attractive quality. Shankarshanam, Shambhakrupenam, Agarshanam is in his very character, in his very nature. Not only Lord Krishna attracted the hearts of all Brajagopas, Brajagopis in Vrindavana Lila, but also Lord Balarama also attracted greatly, most wonderfully attracted the hearts. I repeat, he also irresistibly attracted the hearts of 
all the Braja Gopas, the Braja Gopis, everyone of the Vrindavana, Aparata Chagaloka Vrindavana. So both, both of them have got all attractive qualities, naturally being one distant from each other. They both, they both looked so beautiful and wonderful by their <coughs> by their fames, palms, <laughs> qualities, by the beauties of their divine names, fame, forms, qualities, their playful ways of love relationship, the way their playful love relationship Hare Krishna. The way they are Leela, Nectarian, Nectarian love pastimes manifested and <coughs> which blessed. And that, that blessed with Nectarian bliss, blessed everyone with the Nectarian bliss, we find what we call Vashishta. How the taste, the nectarian taste of their sweet pastimes, love pastimes, also inundated, churned, overwhelmed <coughs> the hearts of all their associates with so much blissfulness. You know? So we find both of them, we find found such a lila in both of them, Krishna Bhakti. They look so wonderful and beautiful by all their aspects. We all know. Balarama, <coughs> Balarama, Krishna Balarama, both are a divinely handsome figure from divinely colors. One was imbued with the white color, the white complex, and another, other was that of Freshly rain cloud color, another beautiful complex, another very beautiful complex. Sometimes you always think, oh, Krishna means black. Never, never it is like that. Never black color. It's called in a general sense black. It's actually, it's, you know, fresh rain cloud color. It's a very, very beautiful color. Now, bliss, such a brownish bliss, slight touch of black, blackish colors, combination. It's never a black color, sticker. No, sometimes you see brown is blue is fresh rain cloud. No, it's not a deep rain cloud. Not a rain, not the cloud which represents the heavy rain, but light rain. That kind of cloud sometimes we find in the sky, which produces light rains, fresh rain cloud. And that, that's a, that is a beautiful color. <clears throat> and that is the color of Krishna. Nava Nindra da Nindita Kantika. Even his color, Krishna's original complexion of color, even reproaches, denounces the dress rain cloud color. <laughs> Meaning, it is, it is in surpassing, excelling its spirit. Excelling the beauty of fresh rain cloud color cannot even compare Krishna's complex and so beautiful, super excelling. Just to give us some idea, some examples are given as like Navonila the Shamma. His complex and color is like fresh rain cloud color. Navonila the Shamma. Now the often the devotees, often the 
great lovers, the great appreciate, great admirers of Krishna, they often they are often not satisfied by just simply comparing Krishna's color with other examples. They say it's even excelling, denouncing their quality of the colors, much more than that. Just giving some example only to give you some idea, but that doesn't say everything. Cannot express everything about Krishna's beauty and quality. That's the, that's the very you know, frequent, frequent styles many devotees have accepted in order to describe the glories of Lord Krishna in many ways. So, back to the point. Balarama looks so beautiful with a charming white complex and Krishna also looks so beautiful. Samashundar complex, Navanirada complex, Navanirada Shama, mm. elder brother and younger brother. Although, look into the, look into the, the special loving relationship between two forms of Supreme God. One is manifesting as Shayam or Bhagavan or Krishna. The Supreme Almighty, the, the limitless, the unlimited, the unlimited personification, the, the unlimited personification of all power, knowledge, beauty, and bliss. And now, he is becoming the younger brother. Now, one who is this, one who is the second, second self of Krishna, second form of Lord Krishna, direct expansion of Lord Krishna. Now appearing to be Krishna's elder brother and the Supreme Lord Himself, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Himself appearing as His younger brother, <clears throat> to have the past times, to, in order to be releasing the Bhatshala Rasha mood, Bhatshala Rasha relation, in relation to Balaram. Okay. <coughs> manifesting him as his younger, uh, sorry, manifesting him as his elder brother. Because you know, in Indian <coughs> Vedic tradition, elder brother, elder sister, or to speak more about the parents, all are guardians figure. <coughs> so, younger brother in relation to the elder brother is Chotobhai. Mm. My brother, my younger brother, to be guided by me, to be loving me, guardian by me. And if I can have loving guardians over my younger brother or sister, okay, to take care of them, to protect them, take care of them, nourish them. <clears throat> that's the mood, that's the way of relationship according to the original maybe tradition, Sanatana Dharma. So Krishna wanted, Krishna wanted to release that Bhatsala Rasa Prema from Lord Golarama. And therefore he became, he was so happy, he he so much enjoyed. He enjoyed it so much to become his younger brother, to take the position of his younger brother, okay, letting Balarama to become eternally his elder brother. It is very difficult to say who is gaining more and who is gaining less. I cannot say that. Both of them are gaining better than both of them. 
both of them were relishing their relationship, love relationship, better than both. Equal to both, better, better than each other. That's the only way to express, you know, watching together. Hmm. So, that are some transcendental characteristics of some mysteriously wonderful transcendental characteristics cannot be really <coughs> expressed who is relishing better than who, who is relishing greater than who. So best way to present in this way, both are relishing better than each other. You know, that's what once you know, our Parva Guru Dev, Sri Saraswati Goswami Thakur Prabhupada remarked. And we take that, take that from his direct remark. Once it so happened, I think either during the festival of Mandosa or festival of Mandosa, Diyakra Jagmasya, or festival of Gaurapurniva, and the festival of Javanna, Nisya, Mandosa, Diyakra Gaurapurniva. So, some point, Okay. So many, you know, so many items of prasadam brought to him. Um, opulent prasadam, all looking so beautiful and opulent, gorgeous. So his disciples, some point his disciples brought almost 108 items at the place of prasadam. Holding in little, little, small clay. How do you say? Clay pot. Clay cups. Clay cups. Yeah. Clay cups. You know? Sometimes you know there the are 108 items. At least 64 items. If possible, 108 eight items of bowls. So, after the offering of the bowl, brought. <coughs> All those items of prasadam before Sri Sarsri Thakur Prabhupada. <coughs> so, so, the place, so, it was, okay, first of all, they tried to place it on the table, but no table, the table was not big enough to contain all. So, at some point, <coughs> has to be placed on the ground. And Sri Thakur Almost Sarsri Thakur Prabhupada got surrounded by all the items of Prasad. So, anyway, he was managing to taste all of them. So, it was not even possible to eat all of them. Now, to finish eating all of them, 108 items. So, he started tasting them. But joyfully, Sarsri Thakur Prabhupada. Okay, it began to be tasting all of them, releasing all, the taste of all of those items, prasada, and started making some gestures, uh, so delicious, each of them very, very delicious. And then he, in a way, okay, in a way, kind of, he, had, he congratulated the Cooks, those two cooks, men cooks of those items. Okay, lovingly looking at them. Oh, cooks so nice. They have been blessed by Simati Radha entirely. Feels like they have been specially blessed <coughs> to be able to be able to be preparing these items so delicious. Mm. Oh, and their heart uplifted, for their hearts simply uplifted, got uplifted, receiving some praise from their beloved master, beloved divine master Gurudeva. Then, at some point, some of the disciples, <coughs> accompanying Sri Thakur Prabhupada during the eating prasad, okay, I think one of them, one of them, 
very enthusiastic with the joyful enthusiasm asked Gurudeva. They used to call their Gurudevas the Prabhupada as Prabhu also. Prabhu. The word Prabhu is great. So glorious. Ultimately, Prabhu means Supreme Lord. So, they used to be calling us Prabhupada also Prabhu. So, he asked, Prabhupada, which one? See, this one. Which one you like the most? Prabhu, Prabhupada. Which one you consider most delicious you like the most? So, Prabhupada was, he continued to taste. <laughs> didn't reply immediately. <clears throat> After some time, I mean, within a short time, within a short while, he just looked up, looked at him. Every item is more delicious, I mean, more delicious than the other. <laughs> Okay. So, he said, in other words, everything is better than everything. Every item is better than every item. And then he started again. Started again very easy. So, that was his way of answer. Oh. Each item is better than the other. So delicious. After all, he was tasting all of them as Krishna Prasadam. So he didn't want to get into that well, analytical experience of which one is more delicious, less delicious, all Krishna Prasadam. Mm. Or manifested by some blessings, blessings of Radha, all so delicious. So each prasada item was better than the other, all are better than each other. So I'm taking that from so I'm just collecting it, receiving it from the direct remark of the Shashri Chakra applying it in relation to Krishna Bhagavan. Mm. So he is also called as a Balabhadra, called as Baladeva, besides Balarama, also called as Balabhadra, Baladeva. You can understand the meaning of Balam, meaning of Balam, strength, transcendental strength, force, power. Hmm. Beautifully strong and strongly beautiful. So, strongly beautiful means intensely beautiful. It has to be understood in that way. When, when Krishna or Balarama is manifesting as powerfully, powerfully beautiful, powerfully beautiful. Sometimes it is a romantic way, it is in the sense, okay, in some sense of the feelings of separation. And then it is called as heart breakingly beautiful. Can you know what is that? The nature of that beauty. Not only it fulfills heartful feeling, but it becomes heartbreakingly beautiful. It is so beautiful. You cannot take it. Okay. Wants to receive, wants to receive that beauty, imbibe the nectar, drink the nectar of that beauty to the limitlessness more and more and more and still it increases the pain of thirst. Still, see, the more one is drinking the nectar of the, their beauty, the more the 
earning pain, the earning pain of the thirst to have it more increases. Such is the nature. That was sometimes can be defined as heartbreakingly beautiful and painfully beautiful. The devotees relish the love of Krishna. Devotees, the pure devotees, the, on the eternal divine associates of Krishna Radhika, Krishna Balarama, they relishes, enjoys and relishes the love of Krishna Balarama. Not only in joyful mode, but also painfully joyful moment, especially in the mode of the problem. It is so attractive, painfully attractive, joyfully attractive, painfully attractive with natural joy. Okay? Love joy and love pain. Being attracted, being taste in the love, in the joy of love, in the pains of love, painful bliss of love. It manifests all ways. When we say Ladin, Ladin in the heart of all the pure devotees, pure associates of Krishna. Both ways. Both ways. To Shambhava, Shambhava way, Vipralam way. To the way, to the ways of union and union, also to the ways of union and separation. Vipralam, <coughs> both ways. So, going back to the point, Balabhadra is Master, source, owner, personification of all Balam, divine strength and power, Bhadra. But it is unified with gentle nature, very gentle. Okay, very gentle. Highest of all gentlemen, all around. Krishna is considered one of the so, names of Krishna is Purushottama, the best of men. The best of all men. Again, not human beings. You have to understand the transcendental sense. The best of all transcendental male conception is Krishna. Similarly, the best of all, the best of all gentle, gentle manly nature is Balaram Bhadra. Bhadra also means something which is very auspicious. Very auspicious. Bhadra means which causes auspiciousness, which brings so much auspiciousness and benediction. Also Bhadra. Bhadra means inauspiciousness. So Balaram Bhadra means a Lord, Supreme Lord, with Supreme Lord in whom the all the divine strength, the limitless divine strength and power, and its gentlemanly way, this gentle nature, both have been personified, combined, Balabhadra. So, so, so much benedictions, unlimited benedictions, but means benedictions also. All auspicious benedictions. Baladeva. Deva means Devdhatu Kriyaya Lilaya. Deva means Godly. Supreme God. Godly beauty, one. Who is the personification of all ultimate godly beauties, qualities, characteristics called Deva, ultimately. Krishna, one of the names of Lord Krishna also Deva. 
so beautiful whole world. So I should not be attracted to pull into the expansion of that verse. So let us devo. He devo, he doita. So Krishna is addressed, called as Deva, my beloved Lord Hakuma. Deva means the beloved God of life. Devi means Devi is one of the excellent names, super excellent names of Srimati Radhika. Devi means the divine goddess. The divine and beloved goddess of Aradhaya. Beloved supreme goddess of life is Devi. But the beloved supreme goddess of life is Deva. So Deva, being non different from Krishna, being non different from Supreme Deva, Krishna, Balurava, also called Baladeva. He has also got same characteristic. See Balurama, Balabhadra, Baladeva, Shankarshana, all these names are so full of meanings. I can be continued just to be explaining into the world. I can continue the experience of one meaning for hours. If I will continue analytically, way, then I know that other aspects of Bhagavad Lila will remain unspoken. <laughs> That's the sweet dilemma. Sweet dilemma. You know, it's a positive problem. <laughs> Not a negative problem, a positive problem. Because of its dynamic ways, multifarious, multiple ways of the manifestations. Already under time pressure now, you are feeling time pressure. See, um, how long can I be allowed to be going on? It's infinite. You can go on hours describing the glories of your Lord. <laughs> Hmm. Feels like I have just began only. Only began. Ocean is there. In the Ananta is so blissful. Another characteristic of Lord Balaram is so ever blissful. Okay, to be chanting, to be engaged in chanting and singing. Singing the infinite nectar and glories of Krishna. Also, Simati Radha. By innumerable mouths, by his through his innumerable mouths, with infinite joy and ecstasy and bliss, that is Ananta Deva. <clears throat> he not only chants, he is his limitless, his unlimited describer, narrator, unlimited chanter, unlimited singer. He he chants, and not only he chants the glories, he sings the glories. Sings. Sings the unlimited nectarine, nectarine glories of Radha Krishna with unlimited nectarine blissful taste, relish of bliss, in unlimited way, not a way, again, unlimited taste. That is. Ananta Deva, characteristic, divine characteristic of Ananta Deva. Also, I wanted to explain, scientifically explain another aspect, right? But many people simply don't understand. When he is described as Dharani Dhara, the retainer, this is a great, the, this, the supreme retainer, or container of all, all universe on his head. How it is possible? Which way he does that? It has to be understood not in a formal, not, not through formal concepts of somebody retaining something on head. <clears throat> After all, we have to understand the nature of the form of Ananta Deva, embodiment of the infinite. Is not cannot be conceived like one head. A thousand heads 
innumerable heads through some form of conceptualization, through some form of concept is described Anantadeva with in a snake form with innumerable hoods of heads. But actually the way our Guru Mahal explains, the Siddhartha Goswami explains, these hoods, those hoods of Anantadeva, not any kind of mundane type of hoods, biological hoods of some mundane concepts of these snakes. It represents a total universal force, universal power, cosmic power. Okay? Like gravitational force, like the gravitational power of force, like other, you know, like other forces in the infinite universal creation, in the whole cosmos. Okay? Not just only gravitational force for power, but also other powers of attractions, cosmic you know, the superpower, powers of the attractions or pulling, other types of the you know pulling or powers of attractions which are keeping whole system of creation together, binding them together. Okay? So it has to be understood, realized in a very as personal way also in the impersonal, infinitely impersonal energy form. Then it will be easy for others to understand. Okay? The hoots of thousand, innumerable hoots of Anantadeva is described in more personal form. But also its basically must be realized as a total force, total universal force. Total force behind the whole infinite universal creation which is keeping things together. Which is, okay, which is pulling things, keeping things, maintaining things, or retaining all the parts of the universal creations together, okay, which is causing the whole integrity in the Sishri city and Rayam. Mm. Creation, maintenance, nihilism, specifically in the fields of the infinite, in endless fields of the creations and maintenance. So, Baladeva is taking care of that as Sankarsana. Next to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, next to the Supreme Almighty God. Okay, Baladeva, you see, second in command to Krishna. is next to the next expansion, next cell of this <coughs> Supreme Personality of God. Krishna. So, so thus, when it is described, he has been holding many planets, many Vishra Brahma, the universe on his head. It has to be understood like those hoods are represented as a total force, total universal force of the Supreme Lord, Shankarsana, as Shankarsana. Okay? Those hoods are not simply made of some flesh and blood and some you know, biological ways. Then it will be a total misunderstanding. Made of divine power, divine energy. All those innumerable hoods of Deva are actually made of all divine energy, power. And that power, that all pervading, that power, which is manifesting as all pervading way, all pervaded, pervading way, is retaining everything on in its land, okay, on itself, like retaining on the head. It's an exam example, the example, certain examples to explain the reality. Okay, actually, that total universal force, total 
infinite absolute power the power in the form of Hallorah is actually retaining this whole universal creation, unlimited universal creation and maintaining. That's how it has to be understood. I understand. Okay, it's a very high time. Okay, so I humbly, humbly put my holy kata, Hallorama kata to rest my ear. Hare Krishna. All glories to Lord Hallorama. Hallorama. Lord Hallorama. Krishna Hallorama. Jeeo ki. Jai Jai Sisi Krishna Hallorama. Jeeo ki. All glories to the divine appearance there. Jeeo ki. Simbalaviva Prabhu. Hare Krishna. All glories to all our Guru Deva. All glories to all our Guru Bhargava Sri Javad Guru Sri Prabhu Madhuki. All glories to the assembly. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare 